Psalms 23. Oh, my beloved friend, you are my shepherd. In your care, I have everything I need. You open the gate to green pastures. You teach me Sabbath and give me time to rest. Beside the flowing stream and the still lake, you restore me to myself in your image. You lead and accompany me into the path of justice and solidarity. And I find my integrity in your way. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I am not afraid because you never leave me and your love cast out fears. With a shepherd rod and staff, you guide me and give me comfort and strength. You invite me to a bountiful table where enmity and division fall away. Justice is important, but super is essential. You welcome me as an honored guest. My joy overflows like a cup poured full and always spilled over. Surely, goodness and mercy have run after me my whole life long. And so I will live under the shelter of your wings and enjoy you forever. Amen. Our next song is in three parts. We're going to sing each part through two times, and then you're welcome to pick whichever part is your favorite or easiest to remember or fits your voice best. And at the end, we will sing all three parts together.
long ago, in the time before all days, before the creation of all things, the one who is known as the Word was there face to face with the Great Spirit. This Word fully represents Creator and shows us he is, who He is and what He is like. He has always been there from the beginning, for the Word and the Creator are one and the same. Through the Word, all things came into being, and not one thing exists that He did not create. Creator's life shined from the Word, giving light to all human beings. This is the true light that comes to all the peoples of the world and shines on everyone. The light shines into the darkness, and the darkness cannot overcome it or pour, put it out. And I will be reading from Matthew 5, <clears throat> verses 14 through 16. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. People do not light a lamp and put it under the bas bushel basket. Rather, they put it on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Amen. We are beginning our Lenten journey. This season we are calling a road to resurrection, from grief to glory. And we're starting this day with a day of remembrance, having an opportunity to remember those who we have recently lost, or other losses in our lives. We have shared in our treasure box memories of ones we love. Our congregation has had an opportunity in the past to surround several families in recent months, the Pusateris, the Snyders, the... Um, Petrosiwis, the Bondimas, and uh, Janine Mickles family. But we have not had an opportunity yet to surround the Hernan family. And so this is our chance to share with them our love for them. You know, loss is a part of life. Whether it's the loss of someone dear to you, or the loss of a familiar place, or the loss of physical mobility or independence or a secure income. Loss is something that we all experience at one point or another in our life. As we begin this road to resurrection this morning, I invite you to first recognize and remember loss in your life, loss of any kind. Recognize it, acknowledge it, name it, own it. Trying to ignore it or push it down inside does never last for very long. That's because loss is a part of life. So as I shared with the children a few moments ago, the pain of loss of a loved one makes us sad. Empty lonely. The writer of Psalm 23 uses the image of a dark valley as a way to describe this season of loss or grief. Perhaps you noticed that the words were different this morning that Stella read. That's an interpretation of this psalm, this very familiar psalm, written by a Presbyterian pastor who was going through her own fight against cancer. Murphy Davis knew, and we know, that the valley of death's shadow stretches from the time of illness and into the entire season of grief. 
walking through that valley, we start asking ourselves, when does the dark valley end? Walking through that valley, we wonder, will the shadows always keep lurking? And will tears keep finding their way up to the top? Or will that emptiness never go away? Grief is not a one and done event, is it? Grief is a season in our lives. We process grief in different ways, different people. There's no right or wrong way to deal with grief. After the death of a loved one, our emotions can move back and forth from shock to denial to fear to anger, to depression, to guilt, to loneliness. Some name that there are stages of grief, and there are different numbers depending on who you read. But there's no particular order that a grieving person must follow in this season on their way to acceptance. We might zigzag through these stages. We might experience one one day and then come back to it again the next week. We might stay in one stage for months, or we might quickly move from one stage to another. The way you move through your season of grief belongs to you. But you don't have to walk that valley alone. I beg to differ with the words of that folk hymn that says, we must walk the lonesome valley. We have to walk it by ourselves. Oh, nobody else can walk it for us. We have to walk it by ourselves. I disagree because you don't have to walk by yourself. First, Jesus walks that lonesome valley with us. And second, other people can accompany us in this season. No one can take your grief for you, but we can walk with you. That's what the community is all about, isn't it? Truly, it is the beauty of the body of Christ as Twyla Paris sang. You see, Jesus has walked this valley before. He knows suffering. He knows feeling abandoned. He knows that loss is a part of life. He reaches for your hand and encourages you to hold your head up high. And don't be afraid of the dark. Walk on, walk on with hope in your heart, and you'll never walk alone. It's Jesus who lights the way, whose light shines in the darkness of the valley. As we heard this morning in the Gospel of John, Jesus is the light of the world. He's a glow of hope even in the darkest corners of our hearts. So imagine with me, if you will, a conversation that you might have if you're walking through this valley of the shadow of death with Jesus. Jesus points out to you the deep well of memories that you have the lessons that you learned, the inspiration that you received from the one you have lost. I'm sure no one is surprised that Charlene Hernan inspired many. She worked these last years at Johns Hopkins University where she had an extremely positive impact on coworkers and students alike. At a celebration of her life on the campus recently, the following quote was shared. You've probably heard it before. Success isn't just about what you accomplish in life. It's about what you inspire others to do. 
the way you live, you see, becomes an inspiration to other people. Charlene never liked to be in the limelight. She preferred quiet at home. She was one of those introverts who actually was grateful for that shutdown at the beginning of the pandemic. Yet her light shined, shone into so many lives. Her family, her students at the college, high school, and middle school level who remember her and her impact on their lives from years ago. The children in our church who grew up under her tutelage as a leader and guide in faith place and vacation Bible school in the summers. The choir members she sang with. in her work and play, in the way she used her time with her energy, her dedication, her intelligence and creativity, Charlene inspired. She was committed to working for social justice and to doing what was right, to speaking up for those who were disenfranchised, dismissed, or disregarded. So as you're walking together, Jesus is saying to you, remember. Remember it all. On your journey through this valley, Jesus also takes time to point out the other people who can accompany you on this journey, in this season. People you expect and people you don't expect. How beautiful. How beautiful is the body of Christ. In the community which surrounds you are people who can cry with you. Remember I said that's okay. People who can remember the stories with you. People who can take time to break bread with you. People who dance with you. People who listen to you and maybe even go fishing with you. You don't have to walk this lonesome valley by yourself. Charlene valued Andra Day's song, Rise Up, which became very closely tied to the Black Lives Matter movement in recent years. I want to share with you one verse from that song don't worry, I'm not going to sing it. When the silence isn't quiet and it feels like it's getting hard to breathe and I know you feel like dying, but I promise we'll take the world to its feet and move mountains. All we need is hope and for that we need each other. For that, we need each other for as long as it takes. And perhaps, as you and Jesus walk through this valley, he reminds you that in the same way that a light placed on a table can give light to the whole house, if it's small, you are called to shine your light before others, that they may see the way you live and glorify God. That's a challenge for every single one of us, those of us who are left with our feet on the ground, those whose time on earth has ended, Tony and Janine, Rebecca and Della, Charlene and Olivier, can no longer shine in our lives in person. We truly miss the glow of their presence, their words, and their actions. 
they've left us to carry on that light to others, to be inspirations for those in our own spheres of influence, to work every day to make this world a better place. We carry that glow best when the light comes from within us, from the light which is Christ Jesus our Lord, the light which never goes out. The days are dark, the journey is long, and there are others who need light in their loss. So we begin this Lenten journey today with remembering. With remembering those we have lost and remembering the hope we find in Jesus Christ. Our hope comes because we believe in the human one who knows pain, suffering, and grief from his own stint on this earth. We believe in the Holy One who's the light of the world and the one who shines a light for our path, even in the darkest corners of the valley. We believe in the living one who has conquered the power of death once and for all. And we believe as we said together at the beginning of our worship today, that in life or in death, we belong to God. We belong, each of us, hand in hand, heart to heart. We belong to that great chief, to the father, to the mother, to the creator, to the shepherd. We belong. Loss is a part of life. We cannot pretend that it's not. But thankfully, so is the shining glory of Jesus Christ, who has overcome the power of death, the light that can never go out. These closing words from a brief statement of faith are good news to us, news that we can celebrate with believers in every time and place. We rejoice that nothing in life or in death can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. So we are going to have an opportunity to hear from Charlene. Charlene wanted this song to be shared today. She has always identified with the characters in West Side Story who were stuck in a system of racial divide. She chose to sing this song because it carries a message of hope that someday, somewhere, Everyone will belong. No one will be disenfranchised, dismissed, or disregarded. And we thank Quint Cates for sharing this with us. Time. 
is a place for us somewhere a place for us time to gather with time to spare time